Hello and welcome to Agriculture Academy's guide to choosing the best rooting medium you can use to propagate your cuttings. We are going to discuss six options you can use. Water, peat moss mixes, vermiculite, sand, professional pre-mixed media and rock wool. If you like what you see and hear in this video, you can find all this information in our ebook. The link is in the description below. Let's start by discussing some important features all rooting media should contain and why you would want to use them to propagate your plants. Propagation by cuttings is one of the most popular propagation techniques used by both hobbyists and commercial growers alike. Cutting propagation is favored for its easiness to perform and that very little sophisticated equipment is needed to achieve success. A media used for rooting stem cuttings needs to provide three things. 1. Oxygen. 2. Water. And 3. Support. Roots cannot grow in the absence of oxygen. Water is needed to keep the plants alive and photosynthesizing and by keeping your cuttings upright and supported, stressful conditions such as disease proliferation can be avoided. Although they might not be quite as numerous as the plants you can propagate from cuttings, there are many different rooting media that you can use to root them. But which option is best for you? In this video we are going to take a look at the different options at your disposal and help you decide which is best for your growing needs. Let's get started with the simplest and most widely available option, water. If you are a beginner propagator and would like to practice with some easy to root plants, then consider starting with water. Simply fill a container with tap water and place the stems of your cuttings below the water line. Remove the lower leaves and make sure they do not sit in the water. Consider using containers with smaller openings to keep your cuttings from falling into the water. Otherwise, use elastic bands or ice cream sticks to prop up your cuttings. Keep your cuttings in a sunny spot and make sure you change the water daily. As you can see, this is a simple method of rooting cuttings that is suitable for even novice growers. However, there are some things you must keep in mind if you want to maximize your chances of success. Tip 1. This method is best suited to easy to root plants. Most often, this will include herbaceous species such as annual herbs. We use basil as an example in this video as it produces roots quickly and easily. Other suitable plants include succulents, geraniums and other herbs. Tip 2. As many rooting hormone powders are not water soluble they cannot be used in these cases. You can get around this by using liquid hormones, although this will often not be necessary because easy to root species, like basil, do not benefit much from rooting hormones. Tip 3. Stagnant water quickly becomes anaerobic and disease then flourishes. This means you will need to frequently change your water to keep your plants healthy. Tip 4. You will need to make sure you use watertight systems. This is easy when you are only using small containers to root your plants, but if you are planning on starting a large-scale endeavor, such as hydroponics a great deal of effort will be required to ensure all systems are watertight. Quar and perlite mixes. One of the most popular options for commercial growers, peat moss mixes are made up of various peat sources and fine perlite. The quar maximizes water retention, while the perlite aerates the medium, and both support the cuttings. Quar is made from coconut husks and is able to retain a high degree of water. Coco quar is a sustainable resource that can often be used in the place of peat moss. Peat moss is the dead remains of plant material that has accumulated over hundreds of years. Dry moss is lightweight and this fibrous peat can hold 15 to 20 times its weight in water. It can be mixed with other materials to improve the water holding capacity of the material. It also has a high porosity with a pH of 4 to 4.5. Perlite is made from volcanic rock expanded at 982 degrees Celsius. It is free from disease organisms, insects, wheat seeds and other living matter. It has a neutral pH between 7 to 7.5 and contains no nutrients, apart from a small amount of sodium, aluminium and fluorine. Perlite improves aeration and drainage and floats out of a medium. It should be moistened before use to limit the spread of dust. Peat and perlite mixes can be pressed into polystyrene or plastic containers and they do not need to be watertight. Peat and perlite mixes are also suited to more difficult to root cuttings, such as roses, lavender and even some fruit and nut species. The media must be kept moist, which can be achieved using mist beds. However, as the media is constantly wet algal growth will soon begin. One of the most important factors that contributes to commercial growers favoring peat and perlite mixes is that the same media can be used to start seed. This reduces the amount of work and capital commercial growers need to invest as a single media can be used to suit a variety of propagation requirements. Vermiculite Vermiculite is a mica mineral that is found in Montana and South Carolina in the United States and in Falabawa in South Africa. Vermiculite expands at 760 degrees Celsius. It is very light, weighing about 90 to 150 kilograms per cubic meter, 
it can hold 500% of its weight in water. In terms of chemical properties, vermiculite is neutral in reaction with a good buffering capacity and is insoluble in water. Vermiculite has a relatively good cation exchange capacity and can therefore hold nutrients in reserve for later release. Vermiculite contains potassium and smaller amounts of magnesium and calcium. Compared to peat and perlite mixes, when used alone as a rooting medium the pore spaces of vermiculite will be bigger. While this will help improve aeration, if the medium is left to dry out the cuttings will suffer. On the plus side, vermiculite is less susceptible to algal growth compared to the peat and perlite mixes. Similar to these mixes, vermiculite can be used in polystyrene and plastic trays, sand. Sand is very easy to source from hardware shops and specialized swimming pool shops. The best option to root cuttings is pool sand, a coarse sand used in pool filters. Pool sand is also commonly cheaper than the specialized options such as perlite, peat and vermiculite. Sand is a perfect option to fill raised concrete beds due to its cost effectiveness. On the downside, algal growth and pest infestations are commonly associated with sandy media, especially when placed in mist beds. Many perennial, woody plants can be rooted in sand but the sandy roots must be washed before they are transplanted. This causes more transplantation stress compared to peat mixes and vermiculite, as the root system cannot bind the heavy sand. With all of these things considered, sand beds are great for research institutions and large-scale growers looking for a cost-effective rooting medium. Professional mixes Professional mixes are perfectly tailored to suit various purposes, such as seed starting, planting seedlings and amending native soils. Some of these options can also be used to root cuttings. When choosing professional mixes, make sure you select those that have a fine structure that is capable of retaining an adequate amount of moisture. Seed and seedling mixes will be suitable most often. Some mixes also contain important nutrients, which can promote root growth before the rooted cuttings are repotted. As premixed media is often expensive, they will be best suited to hobbyist growers or small-scale gardeners. Rock wool. Rock wool is made by melting together basalt, coke and limestone at a temperature of about 1600 degrees Celsius. As it cools a binder is added and it is spun into fibers and pressed into blocks. The fibers hold a lot of water in their pore spaces, yet retain good oxygen levels, thereby facilitating good root growth. The fibers can be treated with a wetting agent to improve water absorption. Rock wool contains a small amount of nutrients like calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, copper and zinc. The material is alkaline with a pH between 7.5 to 8.5. Rock wool is non-biodegradable, but it does weather slowly. So if you do choose rock wool, consider using the material for more than one round of cuttings to limit the amount of waste you produce. Rock wool is also a great option for hydroponic growers. Rock wool is more than likely the hardest to find of all the materials on this list. But speciality hydroponic stores should be able to supply the product. And that brings us to the end of our video on the different materials and methods you can use to propagate stem cuttings. If you have any other ideas we didn't discuss, we would love to hear your ideas in the comments. Before you go, remember your copy of our ebook and we will see you in the next video.